You know, I literally took a week off break, a remaining week off break, because I got, recently got my wisdom teeth pulled, and I don't really want to talk. I didn't really want to talk in the Clippers game either, but they left me with no choice. I wasn't planning on making a video, especially with the way the Clippers battled back and almost, well, they would have won the game if it wasn't for the fucking refs. But the reason why I'm going to come in here now and talk about this is, yes, I'm going to rant about the fucking refs and how bad they were. But again, I'm also going to put up the evidence of, listen, even though I can yell at my damn laptop screen or my camera um, <clears throat> for obviously how the refs treated the Clippers this entire game, the Clippers put themselves in their own you know, position to end up causing the game. Again, credit to the Clippers for fighting back but I don't give a fuck what anybody says. The Clippers would have won that fucking game if, if, and technically we don't know what would have happened because that's going to then, that ties the game and the Nets get another chance to shoot the ball. But I will still, regardless to my belief, be the Clippers would have won the game if the refs, referees didn't make that call. And two, the thing is this. If you're going to make that call, Make that an and one, because I saw a complete flaw. And two, here's the thing. Harden was doing that thing all game long. Always got called for the foul. No offensive foul. And it doesn't matter, because Harden always does that same exact move Kawhi does. They still call that a foul. Kawhi, offensive foul. But, you're, but my main point is this. You're really going to end a basketball game like that. Like that, really? You're really gonna end a basketball game like that, where you bring a whistle, a whistle at the last second of the game and change the game and essentially make the Nets hold on to the win. The Nets, I don't care what anybody says, the Nets escaped out of the LA with a W. And it doesn't matter because the rest, the referees were terrible the entire game. Like, they were, they were absolutely awful. Like, they had a clear bias against the Clippers, and they were calling everything in the Nets' favor. There were so many times I saw the Clippers getting hacked, getting fouled, this or that. Referees, no call. Okay. Yeah. All right. But still, despite all that, the Clippers found a way to come back and battle this back and almost pull up the W. So the only other time that we're going to see Clippers and Nets, if we get a possible – Finals matchup, and sorry to me, I like my freaking chances, even if, even though KD didn't play, because I know for a fact that we can beat that team. We can beat that team. We just need to tighten up some things and do better. Um, so one, I talked about my issues with the ref. I thought I would be screaming, but actually, no, I'm not trying to scream with how my jaw feels. So that okay, I'm gonna give some points, and then I'm gonna get out of here. All right. The key is the reason why the Clippers lost this damn game to begin with. Okay, can I just say this? Um, honestly, I was at a point in the game. Now, I know Paul George was on a minutes restriction, and, you know, he had to take a seat because of his minutes restriction because of the injury he suffered. But, dude, we're trying to win a damn basketball game against one of the best teams in the league. Damn that. Paul George should have been in on that final possession. And who knows? Maybe Paul George is wide open for three, and instead of – us losing the game um, our looks like what it was going for the tie. Again, that's the right play. It looks like it was the right play. The lane was wide open. Go ahead. But regardless, the fact is this. If we had Paul George out there, who knows? Maybe he would have hit a three. He had 34 points and he was cooking. And because of minutes restriction, he had to be taken out of the game. Okay, yeah, I know it's February, and I know we need to save our players for the playoffs so they don't get hurt. But come on, dude. I'd rather win a game uh, a game in February against a top team than freaking sit a guy just because he's somewhat healthy, somewhat hurt, when he had 34 points and he was your player of the game. The next thing. I thought the reason why the Clippers lost the game is in the last possession the Nets had, the one before they James Harden shot the two game-clinching free-throw shots. 
Kyrie Irving misses a three, and DeAndre Jordan taps in the basket. One, there was no box out on DeAndre Jordan. Two, where was Zubak? Listen, you could say, but it don't matter. Where was Zubak, Ty Lu? That was a failure on Ty Lu for not putting Zubak in the game to make it to get in or at least increase your chances of getting the rebound. It was honestly a thing that Doc would do. Like with Montrez, he would leave Montrez Harrell in against a bigger guy, and usually nine out of ten times the bigger guy ends up with the rebound. Where was Zoo? Okay. No reason to run a small ball lineup for defensive purposes when that's not going to work. So I don't know why Zoo wasn't in the game. If I was a reporter, I would have asked Ty Lue, why was not Zubak or Ibaka in the freaking game? Um, on the chant um, when DeAndre Jordan tipped the ball in. Do you think for purposes he should have been in the game? Now, maybe he could say it because I just didn't want my dude, my center to switch on to say Kyrie Irving. But regardless of the fact, you've got to put your big man in there to get a rebound. Every team, when you need a clutch rebound and a tie game and you need that rebound to get another chance at getting the ball and putting the ball in your court to win the game, you think you put one of your biggest guys in the court to rebound the ball. Look at history. The, the freaking San Antonio Spurs did the same exact thing and what that happened. It, it, ended up, it ended up costing them an NBA Finals. Again, I know it's a meaning, meaningless game in February. There's still many more games left to be played. But still, regardless. Point number two. Outside of really Kawhi and uh, Paul George, nobody else on the Clippers decided to show up. For a majority of, like, I guess you can say four and a half quarters. Some of the other players got cooking, like Marcus Morris and Lou Williams had a pretty clutch three and stuff like that. But other than that, nobody else really did anything. Abaka was god-awful tonight. That man was getting abused tonight. I don't know what was going on with him. He honestly, you ask me, Abaka has been playing like dog crap for the last couple of games. For some reason, he can't hit a freaking turnaround jump shot, which I think they need to stop posting up Serge Abaka because it's not working. Every time I see him post up, he does a jump hook and he misses. Stop that. Stop it. Um, there was occasional stretches where Zoo didn't play good. Um, Zoo, late in that fourth quarter, did play really well. He was one of the main reasons. Him and Paul George were one of the main reasons why the Clippers got back in the game. And as soon as they cut the lead to a six-point lead, then they went complete small ball. Um, the only thing that sucks is Jeff Green got hurt in another ticky-tack foul from the refs, which presumed to bring in DeAndre Jordan back again. Let me drink my water. And then I think the last thing, um, rebounds, I will say killed us. You have Bruce Brown. Who the fuck? Another nobody. Another nobody. Sometimes get these rebounds and stuff like that. What would always be back cutting. You know, he was a nuisance. That can't happen if we play these guys again, especially in the NBA Finals. And then another time, if we get to the NBA Finals and play the same Nets team with KD. The one thing that probably pissed me off the entire game was the fact the Clippers, I believe, had it was either it was either 16, 17, or 18 turnovers. I, it was one of those three. I think they had 18 turnovers. And the Nets turned that into 21 points, I believe. I don't know if I'm accurate. That's just from what I last recently remember. You cannot have 18 turnovers or 16 turnovers, I believe. I think it was 16. You cannot have 16 turnovers make and have the Nets get 21 points off those 16 one turnovers. And the Clippers, they only had, they only made the Nets have like, I think six or seven turnovers for five points. You're going to lose that battle because that only gives the Nets extra possession. There was time after time in this game, the Clippers were turning the ball over and over and over and over and over again. And you just have the Nets come down and get an easy basket because of it, or a three. You're not going to win games if you turn the ball over 16 times and the opposition gets 21 points off that turnovers. So the next time the Clippers play the Nets, which will, uh, will have to be an NBA final 
matchup, the Clippers need to know they cannot turn the ball over. Regardless of the fact, I still believe the Clippers should have won that game. And I think if you the Clippers limit the turnovers to, like, I don't know, five, maybe the Clippers come out on top in this game. But I don't care what anybody says. The Nets escaped a W with a W against the Clippers. So the Laker fans can laugh it up to whatever they can, stuff like that. That was a flop by James Harden. If anything, do not blow the whistle in a clutch key game moment like that. Do not do that because that is literally stupid. If James Harden is going to get that call and he goes to the free throw line, Kawhi Leonard should get the call and it be in one. Otherwise, don't blow the whistle. That was a flop. That was egregious, and that was terrible. It cost the Clippers the game, and it secured a W for them. Again, there's another point saying that the Clippers are good enough to beat this Brooklyn Nets team. They are good enough to beat this Brooklyn Nets team. Because if you remember, they still were only a few possessions away from beating them in Brooklyn with KD on that team. So my point rests. I'm not saying the Clippers are better than the Nets, but I do damn believe that the Clippers can't beat the Nets on any game basis. And definitely, I want to see these guys in the finals if we get there. Again, it's going to be a tough match. I'm going to be pulling my hair. But again, I'm going to say this. I feel like the Clippers have the best chance to beat this Brooklyn Nets team out of any team in the league. Yeah, I've said it. Anyways, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I wasn't planning on making a video because of my wisdom teeth, and now my jaw is killing me. But hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day or night when you're joining this video. Until then, guys, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.